onion and then realized it wasn't recording <laughs> so um, this started from a sprout um, so you know when you've had an onion too long in the kitchen and it grows a green sprout um, you cut it in half and pull out the center sprout where the green bits coming from and put it in a cup of water to grow roots and once a few days have passed and it's grown roots long enough like about an inch or so you can pop it in a in the garden or in a pot plant and um, this one's in a big pot because it needs lots of space um, and it's grown more onion so once this flops over that's when it's ready to harvest so it's going to be quite big I think so that's exciting so I've made an onion from the onion um, also we've got some buds coming on our dahlias so hopefully the possum doesn't eat them and we have a tomato so we keep it covered with this um, Cylon stuff that we got from Bunnings from Hammer Barn oh and I just discovered we've got another tomato growing so that's exciting and we've got strawberries in the back there but oh there's another tomato yay anyway we put this and tuck it in and then it's safe from the birds and the um possum this is our rosemary and it's so oily and fragrant it's divine it's the best rosemary i've ever had so do you? out of it stop so this is a sprout of an onion that I tried to cut out but I couldn't cut it out as much as I should have because it was already too far gone the onion um, so I'm just gonna it, it's growing you can see it's got roots so I'm just going to see how it goes this one's also out of the same onion and it's getting roots so once they've got roots a bit like this one's nearly ready um, I'll pop them in a pot plant one per pot plant and um, that'll grow more onions so that's what you can do with your leftover onions if you don't want them to go to waste stick them in the ground and you can have more for free <laughs>
start this sampler because I want to do something that I can just pick up and it's all one colour and I don't have to work out which thread's which and, you know, just something straightforward. So, this is the colour I showed yesterday, a Vera Soir 103 silk thread number 679, which is a beautiful gold colour. If you've never used this um, thread before, it's really um, good. Um, when you want to start it, you can see here poking out the thread, the starting thread is just tucked in to this. You can just, um, we can't do it one handed. Oh, there we go. You can just push it open and then you can pull your starting thread out. Don't mind my feet up. Yeah, so push them down. There we go. And then you can just unreal what you need, cut it, and then pop the thread back in here and push the top back in. So that's how you store your thread so it doesn't get all tangled. If you haven't ever used a corner gauge ruler, um, you just pop it in the corner of your fabric and depending how much um, fabric you want to leave on either side for framing um, will depend how, uh, like where you start your piece. So on this one you can see there's a two inch line, a two and a half inch line and a three inch line and there's some holes there to poke your needle through if you want it shorter like two inches or two and a half but otherwise you're just going to go to the far right corner where the um, corner of the ruler is and poke your needle through there and that will give me three inches of border um, and that way I'll leave plenty for the framer to do their lacing once I've poked the thread through you can see that's where it is the corner. I'm just going to leave that there while I put it in the hoop and then I'll start somewhere below or to the right of it. Now I've got it um, nice and tight in the hoop I can see where to start. So I don't need a daylight lamp at the moment because it's still light outside um, but sometimes I might have a daylight lamp and I've got my reading glasses on so I can see the thread the holes the count the threads that's what I'm trying to say <laughs> now this is 46 count and some might think oh it's too um, fine I, I could never see that honestly when I first started it was a really slow going uh, when I first started stitching on 46 count but believe me your eyes do adjust and then when you go back to something like 32 count or 36 count you're like oh my god it's like 10 count <laughs> um, so you do get used to it um, and I think the stitches look really beautiful and it's also your stitches are neater when you stitch with one thread on 36 count or above um, because you're only using one thread so they sit neater so I have my first letter in. I did stuff up here. Oops. I got all the way up here, changed thread, and then realised that I'd skip this three stitch bit here. So I had to rip that back. But then I just whip stitched over it and secured it so that I don't have to redo the whole lot. Because life's too short to frog. Just looking at this, although the colour, it actually picks up better on the phone, on the camera, than it does in real life. But I think it'll be sort of like white work, but gold work, because it blends in quite well with this fabric. Um, I think it's going to look really pretty when it's done, even though the colours are pretty close. My friend Rebecca... Rainbow Stitches Oz um, she sent me a beautiful gift look at it all wrapped up I love this woodland I'm all for mushrooms now and I love this woodland um, paper it's so pretty oh my gosh there's a hedgehog eating um, reading I mean not eating and a little bunny rabbit oh my gosh look the little toadstool has a a face 
Anyway, Rebecca said she opened her gift, so I'm, I'm allowed to open mine. <laughs> so I'm going to. I'm very excited. Oh my goodness, Rebecca, this is too much. Look at this. Not one, not two, not even three, but four project bags. Like three project bags and a notions pouch. <gasps> oh, Rebecca, that's too much. Plus all this. Oh my goodness, thank you so much. Oh, look at this with the Christmas trees on. Let me turn it around so you can see the, the fabric. Oh wow, that's pretty. So pretty. And then we've got an Australian native one. This is the lovely Jocelyn Proust fabric. Um, gorgeous with the black cockatoos on them. I'll just show you the back so you can see the fabric in more detail so beautiful I love Jocelyn Proust I love 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 her fabric how cool is this Sydney I used to live in Sydney oh my goodness oh touch of New South Wales touch of where I grew up so lovely thank you and perfect because I started that new sampler and I don't have anything to put it in, but now I do. All right, let me open these other little cuties um, in the bag. Before I do, check out the cute little Christmas tree, tree zipper pull, and the little flower zipper pull, and the little, oops, the little koala zipper pull. And there's another little koala on this one so cute oh my gosh check out the cutest vintage Santa that just is awesome I love it oh my god it's a needle minder he's so cute he's going on my new Bristol sampler for sure oh my god Rebecca so so cute thank you also details just notice the bubbles on the bubble wrap packs um, are heart shaped. I don't know where you found that, Rebecca, but that's adorable. I love the movie Hocus Pocus. Um, and look at these cute needle minders. In a world full of basic witches, be a Sanderson. It's just a bunch of Hocus Pocus. Absolutely love it. So cute. Such a good quality, too. <gasps> Rebecca, thank you so much. And then we have some yummy lint chocolate. Frohe Weihnachten. Merry Christmas. That'll be delicious. My phone screen now is all glittery. How cute is this ornament that looks like little gingerbread men joined together in a wreath? <gasps> Rebecca, where do you find these? Oh my God. They're so cute. I'm gonna hang that on the tree right now. I've gotta get this on and then I'll oops, put it on that one. And then we'll turn him around. I want him on the front so he can be seen. Oh, so cute. He's sitting in front of my Harrods bauble. So cute. And the other ones that Rebecca's given me in previous years is don't look at the dusty floor. This cute's Mrs. Claus. They're like giant cookies, like sugar cookies. And Santa Claus. And then this gorgeous cardinal one. Isn't it beautiful? They look like sugar cookies. So cute. Thank you, Rebecca. I love these Christmas decorations. So I've um, decided since it's Christmas, we've got the Christmas needle minder and we've got the Christmas bag in use and I totally feel like I should start some more projects now that I've got some extra project bags. <gasps> well, I do have to start my um, small for the stitch camp next year. So there you go. There's another bag I'll be in use 
straight away. Thank you so much, Rebecca. You're such a wonderful friend and I'm very spoilt. I feel like I didn't spoil you enough. Um, this is gorgeous. I absolutely love all my gifts. Thank you so much. We're having burgers tonight um, for dinner, so I'm just about to put these in the oven. Um, just some chopped up potato wedges with a bit of spray oil and um, rosemary from our garden. It's a really fragrant, fragrant rosemary. It's very oily and fragrant, the one that we have growing. Um, so that should be nice to go with our burgers. I didn't want to forget to show you Rebecca's lovely Christmas card that came with a gift. And um, it's Snoopy. And they're having a snowman building competition. So cute. I love it. And this is a little dish my mum, I never shared this. This is also, um, this is a Christmas, uh, not a Christmas, a birthday present from my mum. It's, um, it's actual printed on like cross stitch. Uh, on this little dish that you can put rings on or whatever. Uh, yeah, very cute. And I've got my baby it's cold outside um, pillow just sitting here that I stitched in honour of Leanne Malzuski of Lost in Floss who passed away from breast cancer at the start of the pandemic. And then we've got our Nutcracker Man which I'll just pause and I'll wind him up. Sorry for the dogs barking. This is a cute little um, tea light holder. I have another one in a different colour that um, my friends in Switzerland, their daughter Ida, who I think of as my niece, um, she painted this for me when she was little. She's now about, what is she now? Seven, eight? Um, and yeah, I like to bring it out each year and light the candle. These candles that I lit the other night are also um, hand dyed by Ida, and um, we have another, t I think, another two candles put away. So um, I've been lighting these for Advent, and then I have this cute gnome sitting below that I got last year at my quilt group's uh, Christmas dinner.